Ladies and gentlemen, you are at the right place. It is Red Pill Tamales. I am your host, Chingo Blingo with the big tamarindo. Brr, 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 and my co-host, come on, man. He's supposed to be like producer, producer Rob. Producer Rob. Yes, yeah. sir. Man, RPT season <clears throat> three, episode number 34. This drops on the day that Texas goes completely wide open and free. Yeah. It's like Texas Independence Day part two. Yeah. Yeah, right. People are hating it, man. People are hating it, and I'm loving it. Da-da-ba-ba-ba. Who's mad? Who's mad? Um, what do we call them at this point? Because, you know, we have to use one side because majority from one side. You don't hear a lot of Republicans saying, no, nah, stay closed down. It's the other side, you know? So the left. I, the clip that I posted on YouTube said, Texas is reopening on uh, tomorrow, which is 10, mm-hmm. uh, 310, mm-hmm. and the left is mad. The left is upset about it. Yeah, I saw a uh, graphic. Sorry, I'm now go ahead. blocking the other camera. Get your camera, get your camera. I saw a graphic that was, it had a list. It mm-hmm. said, what do all these states have in common? The yeah. states that were open. Mm-hmm. And it was all Republican, Republican, Republican. Sorry, go back to that. Oh, other yeah, the other, the other camera's got the, I gotta, I gotta, I need to raise it up. Well, that works. Ahí está. Ahí está, that's better. But yeah, man, um, shout out to the patron that sent us a message. And they compared us to the No Agenda podcast. With Adam Curry. Correct. And, Man, I'm hooked on it. Yeah. I already heard like three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. He goes way back. Uh, it, he's in the rotation, but his show is so dense with information, you know, mm-hmm. with real information, mm-hmm. not just edutainment the way we do it, that mm-hmm. it like, you kind of got to like, okay, let me check those sources. Like, let's read further into it. And it's super interesting. And uh, yeah, shout out to Adam Curry, podfather, you know, of the RSS feed. Invented the RSS feed. Invented us, invented for us the ability to syndicate this stuff. That's right. Shout out to the OG Adam Curry for coming up with the technology and inventing podcasting which allows us a platform to connect with you guys okay so let us know hit us up on the patreon app if you're a patron if not join patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales let us know when do you enjoy listening to your red pill tamales how do you take your red pill is it on the treadmill is it going out for a walk is it in traffic at work let us know por favor yeah, is it in the car when you have the auxiliary cable and you're playing it for your friends and your friends are just rolling their eyes? Like, really? They're like, probably like, this is fucking boring, bro. Put on some Gucci, man. You gotta listen to it, man. Put on some leftist rap. No, the only leftist <laughs> you need is Lefty Larry, everybody. Lefty Larry. Where Pratt. are you gonna be, man? You're going out of town, aren't you? Yes, sir. We have some show dates coming up, uh, mainly Texas, because uh, that's what's open. Freedom of Speech Tour Dates. That is right. We are in San Angelo, Texas this Saturday. First show sold out. We just added a show. That is uh, March 13th, San Angelo, Texas. And then March 26th, down in Mission, Texas. I heard that one's pretty much sold out as well. Then we hit up New Braunfels, Texas, April 3rd. That's right, at Goofy's Comedy Club. And then we hit beautiful, sunny West Coast, California. We hit up Brea, California, April 7th. I expect all you guys to be there and sell it out, pack it, show love for your Texas homie. And then we have April 9th, April 10th in beautiful, beautiful, Killeen, Texas. You smell smell that? That's freedom. That sure is. We need to make a candle that that smells like freedom, Rob. Okay, that is your, that's the project for this after this week is for you to, uh, Tell me what scent you like and what you think smells like freedom. And we're going to produce it, and that's going to be an exclusive for, uh, for listeners. I didn't finish smell testing uh, the other ones. I brought, the, okay. I brought all of them this time. Okay, bet. Yeah, bet. yeah, So I'll go through. Uh, oh, yeah. Obviously, this coffee one smells great, but this one, Mighty Soul might beat me to this formula. Yeah. She might want to release this one. And what's funny is that there is like, when we started this podcast, there was like a ceremonial candle. We'd always light a candle. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's a rule. I mean, OG listeners know that, that Chingo would light a candle. Oh, the fucking air's all yeah. going to turn it off. Loud ass AC. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to um, to cover. Um, I've been posting stuff on social media. Um, You've been on it. Yeah, man. Because, you know, they want me to just be quiet and just be like George Lopez and everybody and just promote Biden. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, can I just tell you, I got a kick out of uh, George, the comments on George Lopez's page on TikTok. Yes. When he posted the TikTok with uh, Governor Newsom who currently is a very polarizing uh, politician because arguably there's like over a million signatures for his recall. That would be um, when Arnold became governor, he came in right after a recall. So they haven't had a recall in a while. So Governor Newsom la está cagando uh, between the hypocrisy and just how he's mismanaging everything. So George Lopez did the TikTok with him. People jumped on him. And the comments were hilarious. (laughs) The comments were hilarious. Um, also, shout out to Paul Wall. I got I to talk about this. 
um i was on instagram and i saw paul wall posted his uh his his uh video saying what to do baby it's my birthday coming up gave my do, treated baby. myself to an early birthday gift he went and got the vaccine mm -hmm. and uh he was with his wife and um the comments people ruthless oh my god people just like no fam this this boy is a world health organization influencer <laughs> people were saying uh if i see a zombie with a grill i know it's you <laughs> dude i'm not gonna lie look first of all i know people have grabbed their popcorn and laughed at my expense they went in my comments yeah. so i can appreciate a lit comment <laughs> section paul wall's comment section on his vaccine video was so lit that I'm like, yo, these people need to be comedians. Yes. I was like, exactly. dude, I started watching Coming to America too. I, I laughed a little bit. You know, I try to watch funny stuff. You know, I watch, you know, you watch funny stuff, but this comment section, <laughs> my, my girl came into the room. She's like, why are you giggling so loud? I'm trying to put the baby to sleep. I'm like, man, it's lit up in her. Dude, the internet's undefeated. And it's funny that it's just like regular, you know, Joe Schmo people that just have these real witty and real like poignant points that are just fucking hysterical for no reason. It's just a vaccine video, but they fa find a way to make it hilarious. Yeah. Um, we attended my buddy uh, uh, Lucky's wedding to his wife, Kelly. They're on a vacation. They're on honeymoon. Honeymoon? They're on honeymoon right Están now. Están en el honeymoon. Están en el jalaborde. <laughs> uh, they're on their honeymoon right now enjoying it. But uh, the, the wedding was beautiful. We had a great time. And uh, my buddy Stunner, who uh, I used to do rap, you know, make mixtapes. We traveled the country together. Man, this boy had me cracking up. He, he's one of those folks that, like, comes with that poignant perspective. Where yeah. It's just, like, off the cuff. And it's just so real and funny. Like, he's, he's just talking about adult grown-up stuff and how, you know, we're older, we're, mature, we're more mature, you know. Is he being serious, though? No, no, yeah. Okay, no, he yeah. basically said, he was like, look at my son. You think he'd survive in the hood? He's like, look mm. at him. You know, and I'm just like, That's I'm funny. like, he's roasting his son Damn. at a wedding. <laughs> and then, you know, he's like, everybody in my neighborhood, you could tell they're trying to like leave the hood. He's like, but don't bring that hood bullshit over here. Yeah. And then the other comedian, Coast, is like, do you only want to live around white people? Is that what you're saying? You only <laughs> want to live around white people? He's like, look, man, white people ain't going to give you no problems, bro. They might call HOA, <laughs> but that's about it. He's like, I'm not trying to hear pa 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 every New Year's. <laughs> He's like, and if you do, that's me. Uh, that's funny because there's those commercials, entrance commercials where it's like State Farm or some shit. And that is like the neighborhood, you know, it's got the white picket fence and the mailbox. And the lady's like, these bushes are, you know, so tall. This mailbox isn't like farther from the street. And that's exactly what you're into. That's what you're going to get into. HOA. What's what's the name? HOA Karen. Yeah. So it brings us to one of our first topics. Yeah, dude. I had to put that one at the top of the list because I noticed it on one of the clips or a recent uh, full episode where, and I, I hadn't seen it in a while, but you would get that a lot when all those arrows were coming why are you trying to be white homie mm -hmm. are you trying to too hard to be white and this one was directed they're at not me. gonna accept you uh -huh. right and this one was just like the guy the other guy's trying way too hard to be white and i i've always heard that and it's funny so i had to look into it because i hadn't looked into it in a very long time do you know what that means just without even like looking it up like what does that mean because I, I still i read it and i didn't know what the fuck it meant still when someone so, says you trying to be white so i could see what what they're trying to say totally because in their mind people that say this oh you're trying to be white homeboy in their mind there's certain activities that we have to be limited to you know only rasa shit you got to vote democrat you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. there's just certain rasa activities and the minute you venture out of that, maybe you want to join a jujitsu class. I don't know. Maybe you go into Bible study. I don't know what they consider white activities, but it's basically anything that they don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> or they're not doing yet or they're afraid. That's another big thing. I think insecurities play a big role because if you have this, um, not victim mentality, but if you already feel like a second class citizen mm -hmm. and if you already look at the world through the, through the lens and the filter of racism, if everywhere you look is racism, 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 versus a different filter, like maybe economics. Yeah. Maybe put on the economics filter from time to time and understand why things are the way they are. For example, the mainstream media is not telling you everything that's going on with the George Floyd case. They're not telling you that, hey, this cop is probably going to get off. And they're probably not going to hit them with the level of justice that you would prefer. So right now, there's folks around that courthouse 
uh, wanting and expecting a certain outcome, a certain verdict, because chances are they view the world through the lens of racism, racism, racism. We want justice, justice for us, because I know y'all not finna let this racist murderer off the hook because y'all do this all the time. Crooked cops and, and racist murderers and y'all finna let him off. Well, the news, what the news is not doing is telling you the amount of fentanyl in his system, what the jurors are going to see, what the, um, the different defense arguments. So this is like OJ all over again because yeah. <laughs> it's on TV. I think you were probably I was a baby. way too young for that. You were too young, yeah. bro. I was in high school and me and all my minority friends, we were the only minorities in that whole prep school. So when they announced the verdict, we were all crunk. Like, finally, a, a, a person of color gets off. Finally, you know, all the fake evidence y'all done planted. And then we, they done, sh the, pro, uh, the defense, OJ's defense, already showed that they planted and, and they were sloppy. And, and one of them had some Hitler shit in his house. And uh, motherfuckers were happy. So now fast forward, there will be riots. It's like they're setting us up. For the, for the L.A. 90, whatever it was, 92 riots, the Rodney King riots, all over again. They're setting it up. They're basically saying, like, um, racism is real because the mainstream media has been saying everything is white supremacy, everything is racist, and if George Floyd's killer doesn't get X amount of, of time or whatever, then y'all need to go burn some shit. Yeah. So they setting us up for failure because you think, you think these um, Latino Hollywood are going to help spread the word like hey guys just fyi don't get your hopes up here's what to expect there's a drug called fentanyl it comes from china <laughs> homeboy had three times I, I know i'm i'm talking about something very controversial because it has to do with black lives matter it has to do with george floyd i'm just telling y'all the real yeah i'm telling y'all the truth what you gonna do cancel what Cancel what? What sponsor you finna? I'm just, t I'm the only motherfucker that's finna give it to you like it is. If you're looking at this situation through the lens and the filter of everything is racist, then you about to be real upset when you find out that they're not going to convict this cop. Now, if you look at it from the perspective of we just want justice, we just want the system to do what it's supposed to do, meaning look at all the facts, not just I saw his knee on his neck. Even though he was still able to talk, mm -hmm. even though he was saying, I can't breathe an hour before the, that cop even showed up. He's, he had been saying, I can't breathe, even though, you know, we all know, well, maybe we don't, but people know, yeah. people that know about fentanyl, this is exactly the way it kills you. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to lay on the ground. You kind of can't breathe. And for you know, it's a wrap. So maybe the knee didn't help. I mean, I wasn't there. I'm yeah. not telling, I'm not on the jury. All I'm saying is this, before y'all take me out of context, and I know I jumped around because the fucking question was, what is why you trying <laughs> no, to be white? That's okay, keep going. But I'll circle back, like Jen Psaki. Um, Here's my point, because I know people are going to try to take this out of context. Be like, orale, he don't care about black people either. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you ain't got no real big homies that's going to tell you, hey, bro, this cop is not going to get what y'all want him to get. Just because you look at you looking at it through the lens of, I saw it with my own two eyes. I don't give a fuck about the fentanyl on his system. I saw the dude's knee on his neck, even though that's official police procedure, training. Mm -hmm. police training. So that that's not gonna help your argument. It's in the fucking training book. Does that need to be changed? I don't know. Maybe I'm not a jujitsu expert. I don't know enough about jujitsu and 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 where the center of the body, you know, and the dude was handcuffed. So, I mean, he probably didn't have to put a lot of pressure on him. Mm -hmm. And we can't read his mind and say that pr that police procedure is intended to kill. Obviously not. That's not what they, that's not what it's for. Did he do it wrong? I don't know. I wasn't there. I saw the same video y'all saw. However, they're going to bring in some toxicology reports. They're going to bring in some autopsy shit. And y'all finna call them racist. Oh, fentanyl, that's made up. They planted that in his, they injected him with it. Dude, the jurors, like I know they're, <clears throat> I think they're in the process of choosing them now. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine being a juror on that case. I mean. But Jingo gave it to you. Like he gave it to you straight. That's what to expect. That's what's going to happen. I don't know when the when it actually takes down the trial. I think it's a summer. I, it I already know. started. Did it? It's on TV. Oh, shit. I'm, so, I'm way so, off of that. So the, in summary, cities are going to burn. There will be rioting. There will be destruction and damage to businesses. Um, the media 
is going to spin it how they want. But ain't nobody telling you the real. Ain't no, a, a lot of these rappers and comedians and Latino Hollywood, name one, pick one. Who's keeping it real like a big homie? Putting it all on the line. Risking getting taken out of context. Risking being called racist and this and that. Ain't nobody giving y'all the fucking real. Shit's gonna burn. Why? Because they set it up for this. They didn't give us the right information. From the jump, they're just letting that clip circulate. Let it circulate. And we're seeing it like, oh my God. And it was a disgusting thing to see. It was heartbreaking. It was tragic to see a man's life. Like you seeing somebody die yeah. on your fucking cell phone. How they threw him in the fucking ambulance was disgusting. The way the dude just had his hands in his pockets. It all looked disgusting. However, the jury's going to factor in, like I said, toxicology reports, autopsy stuff, other doctors, scientists, witnesses, all types of shit. And they probably not going to give Derek the time that you would like. So just get ready. Shit's going to burn. I like the, uh, the the last thing I took from what you just said is the way you said ambulance. You're like the ambulance. The ambulance. <laughs> You know, you got to say shit a certain way for motherfuckers to peep game and understand because how many people have called me cuckoo, crazy, uh, chingo, orale, you're, you're smoking too much scante, homie. How dare you side with the racist white supremacist? It's like, no, man. 2020 revealed a lot of shit and we saw a bunch of bullshit. Uh, Marisol was watching a, a documentary on YouTube this morning of this dude. Uh, I think he's like German, but he lives in Venice. It's Venice Beach. And he's just documenting like a vlog. And here we are under the I-10 underpass. And here we are, uh, Skid Row. And he's just showing just tents all along the beach. He's like, look, this is where they filmed this scene from this movie. And look at it now. Here's where Charlie Chap Chaplin filmed a scene for this movie. And now compare and contrast. It's like the people of L.A., the people of California, are y'all not putting y'all's foot down? Are y'all not tired of this mental health addiction crisis that's being disguised as a, nah, fool, it's because the rent's expensive and, you know, people getting evicted. No, they selling it to you as, oh, man, it's a housing issue. <laughs> it's a drug addiction and mental health issue disguised as whatever the fuck they selling it to you as. I mean, people of California, y'all not... Y'all not, I mean, it's expensive as fuck to live over there by Venice Beach, which is right by Santa Monica. Venice Beach got bought out by Snapchat. Half the shit is Snapchat offices. You got people in these fancy cars pulling into their gated house. And right outside, you got tents and doo-doo and pee and shit. And pff, can't nobody tell them nothing because they have rights. Do you I, remember 20 years ago when that was like the dream? Like, man, I can't wait to make it out to California and I can't wait to nah. set up shop there and, you know, launch my career, or launch my whatever. Now it's like, uh, oof. I mean, it's a beautiful state. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful sure. people, beautiful state. Absolutely. However, let, 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 let a Republican mayor get in there. And I mean, they might fight him. Hey, hey, man, you can't go around kicking people's tents out. You can't go around kicking people out and picking up their shit. Oh, anyway. Kick it, uh, picking up their shit from the... Um, from the sidewalk, you can't, because, dude, they, they start fire. They cause fires. Sometimes there's accidental fires oh, yeah. and shit all up under the freeway underpass. And then what? Now you got to cause more traffic to come and fix some shit. So here's my point. Y'all keep voting blue. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep voting blue. Keep your fucking um, Mayor Garcetti and your motherfucking Governor Newsom. I know, I know some people are like, hey, fool, worry about Texas, dog. Shut the fuck up. I'm just letting you know. I got love for Cali. I was supposed to be there all summer, uh, 2020. We were out there for the month of June, 2019. We love it. It was great. I'm just wondering up to how bad the shit got to get mm -hmm. for y'all to be like, okay, we tried. We tried the Democrat way. And they're just too nice to everybody. They're just, they're fucking us over because they're trying to be equitable to everybody else. Yeah. So... I don't know. Maybe uh, chime in. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, the question really is, right, how how bad does your day-to-day -day life have to get in order for you to say, you know what, it might be worth a try to try something different? I think people, I mean, I was brainwashed. I was just like, I wouldn't even turn on Fox News, you know, and I still don't overly consume it. I, that's not where I go no. for info. That's still kind of mainstream, and I take it with a grain of salt. It's entertainment. It's narrative. Just like the other news. Mm -hmm. You're just getting a different perspective. They're going to frame it and spin it a different way to persuade you in a different direction. But I think P 
people are too afraid to even consider anything that Trump or these other people are talking about. Um, and I, I posted something on the What Did He Said Instagram. I reposted it from uh, at Lexit Movement. Shout out to Jesse. He posted a clip from Fox News and it's Tucker Carlson basically talking about how Zapata, Texas, Roma, Texas, Star County, all these border towns all voted for Trump. He's like, these are working class people. This oh, yeah. is not what they're telling you. He's like, are all these people queuing on? He's like, is that what you're telling me? All these people on the border are queuing on. He's like, maybe they're seeing the destruction of how the Democrats want a loose border. They dumping off COVID infected, you know, Honduran illegal caravan folk. Un pinche desmadre. It's a crisis. You got kids in cages. You got more cages. He's inviting more people in. He's not doing, you know, Joe ain't doing no press conferences. So I posted it. Go take a look at it at what did he said. And uh, maybe I dare not post it on my real chingle bling because the snowflakes are going to melt and, <laughs> and get triggered. What did he said? What did he say? So circling back to uh, that first point of the podcast half an hour ago. Why are you trying to be white? <laughs> yeah, why am I trying to be white? Why, why are we? Oh, you want to stay on topic? Oh, that's white shit. That is some white shit right there. That is uh, the essence of what Wikipedia said. Wiki, el Wikipedia said. The definition of it was something to the effect of, it's, it's a connotation of basically education. So this started in the late 80s, apparently, where there was a, a psychologist and a, uh, I think it was an evolutionary biologist that did a study in the late 80s of how, and this was all revolving around black people initially, but obviously mm -hmm. Mexicans get it and Hispanics, Latinos, whatever, that because they were trying to educate themselves and have a good uh, degree of learning, they were having a hard time trying to keep their cultural norms, you yeah. know, keep apart. It real. Keep, yeah, it keep it real, real yeah. to their friends. And that would make them initially, not, essentially not want to try in school. It and if they like did, you're trying to be white. It sounds like some, um, like if you were an evil, racist, white supremacist, this is a great thing for you yeah. because you're keeping minorities afraid to succeed. You're, you're punking minorities from wanting to have success in education because then we could call you a sellout and say you're disloyal to your raza. Yeah. You're being disloyal to your culture. You're being disloyal to your people. You turn your back. You're trying to leave the hood. You're trying to leave the plantation. You're over there trying to have opportunities and shit for your kids. Oh, you move to the burbs. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you over there going to church and shit. <laughs> oh, you finished school. Yeah. Oh, you you know, you don't sag your pants. Fuck, fuck is wrong with you. <laughs> Ironically, the joke's on you, fucking Cheeto Fingers. I barely got through high school, barely got through community college, and didn't even graduate college. So, on paper, I'm not very educated. So, I don't... It, it, it's just it's just an insult. Um, no, I just thought it was fascinating. And it's not that it hurts my feelings. I know it doesn't hurt your feelings. It's just that if that continues to perpetuate throughout the ecosystem of, of our community... It's it's you're never going to get over that hurdle. If you really feel like educating yourself and bettering yourself makes you seem like lesser of your cultural, you know, demographic, what is the what what is going to happen? Like you're never going to get anywhere. You're always going to be the oppressed type. You're always going to be angry at the world. And you're always going to be mad at everybody that does better than you. So Willie D hit me up. Oh uh, yeah, dope. I missed a call. I didn't have the number, and then he's like, "Hey, it's Willie D. Hit me up," and I'm like, "Man, I don't want to debate Willie D. on Instagram live." <laughs> That's what I thought it was. Like, man, he found out I was a Trumpster, Trumpeter, Trumper, Trumpy Trumper, QAnon, uh, crazy crackhead right wing uh, militia. I think you got all the names in they there. They thought I was a domestic terrorist. You got all the names. And no, I hit him up. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man, what's up? Check it out. And basically, uh, we're supposed to be zooming in, talking to some students on um, Friday when I head out to uh, San Angelo. So I started thinking to myself, like, man, what am I going to tell these kids? And I think I want to focus on like gamification, like showing, this is what I want to tell these kids. I haven't come up with the words or my bullet points, but basically I want to show them, I want to talk to them about systems, strategy, like, hey, what's your favorite video game? You know what I mean? Like, in other words, if you're trying to win at Mario Brothers, you got to avoid, again, this is... I like how you the, said Mario, though. Well, these kids yes. probably don't know what the fuck Mario is. So Let's I'm say Call of Duty. Okay. So basically, you got the ops. You yeah. got the bad guys. There you go. These are hurdles. This might be a bopper at the club. This might be a homeboy that deals dope that's trying to get you involved, trying to get you on the phone talking dirty, like, hey, man, we need to go get this crack. And they might be a snitch. But anyway, I want to show them a little bit about gamification, systems, not goals, and just overall strategy in life. Like, 
I just want to let them know that you can get really, really far in life if you ignore bullshit like, oh, you a sellout. You want to be white. Like they're going to say you're trying to be white. I'm just telling you right now that, you know, fast forward, picture in your head, you're successful. You know, you, you got a, a good household, a good home. You're raising your kids right. You have a ha- happy family. You have love in your life. Fast forward. OK, along that path, you're going to have to stick to the code. Stick to a system of, for example, don't get nobody pregnant when you're young. Yeah. Don't become a dad or a mom too early. Stay out of jail. Um, you know, don't get in problems with the law. So you got to keep your nose clean. Yeah. Um, learn some useful skills. You know, whether that's accounting or plumbing or electrician, or a, a beautician, something. A useful skill so you can make some money. But... um basically avoid the pitfalls because people are gonna call you a sellout so personal accountability yeah yeah so at the core of it right i'm about to red pill these kids (laughs) (laughs) and you got to splash in there being that you're jingle bling you got to say also maybe when you do learn those skills that are making some money be sure to keep your creative brain working Mm -hmm. and work towards those things that you feel like you really love so that as you're making money learning skills you can still work on the things that fulfill you so you don't feel like that job or that skill is weighing you down because you didn't get to work on the creative crafts that really make your heart you know bleed but but here's the thing too um and I, I believe scott adams is one of the people but there's a few people that say passion you know how they always say man find your passion totally he says it's overrated yeah he's basically saying fuck passion <clears throat> they're basically saying figure out some useful shit so you can make some bread and it's gonna become fun like the passion will come as you're trying to excel at being the best at this thing mm-hmm. whether it's selling a widget or or whatever the fuck it is um, the passion will come. Yeah. Do you know uh, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs? I'm familiar a little he, bit. Man, I, I'm going to actually try to get that guy on the, on the fucking podcast. Hell he yeah. has a great speech and he talks about it all the time is not just personal accountability, but um, what we just talked about is like learning the skills, passion, you know, and the the uh, kind of like the pitfalls or the, the problems that can come when you just focus on being uh, like not happy, but Basically happy with these passions. You're right. You're right. Versus fulfilled. Mike Rowe is one of the people that's credited. Mm-hmm. W- exactly. Go on. No, yeah, that, that was the point. But because uh, he recently did uh, History Hyenas not too long ago, probably mm-hmm. like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And he's got another history show coming out. And, uh, he, you know, they touch on that again because, I mean, we both have been in that down that road where it's like, I really want to do this, this particular thing or two things. And it's not very conducive necessarily to building a career path or skill set that you can take into the quote unquote real world. Mm -hmm. But we have to find combinations of being able to do both. Mm -hmm. Personally, Mm -hmm. that's my, that's what I think. Yeah. Because guess what? The creative route isn't all fucking butterflies and sunshine. No, (laughs) because now let's just say me, for example. Okay. Now you gotta be on social media. I don't want to. If I, if I didn't, if I didn't have shows to promote an album to promote, which people to this day are still like stick to comedy, stick to making music, bro. It's like, did, I bet you didn't even hear the album. I bet you're not even paying attention and it just, I have to spam you to death. But I can only spam you so much about so many things we got going on. Yeah. People are like, what the fuck? You have a podcast? It's like, bro, I can't spam you 24 fucking 7 because half the time y'all telling me to shut the fuck up. Do you remember the time when social media was fun? Like when social media was like, you had no idea that it was any in any way dangerous mentally or even physically like being on it and what it could do to your like real, like, do you remember that time? Was it 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago? Maybe, maybe it was always harmful and we just didn't realize. Oh no, totally it was. But at the time you were living in the moment and you're like, this is great, right? Yeah. Promoting shows, music and all that. Cause um, you know, I, I feel the same way. I just had the same conversation with Don and I was telling her like, before when I had that brick and mortar business and I was doing other things or for you, you know, music, uh, art, shows, it's so like a part of having to grow those things, right? Scale your business, scale mm-hmm. your content. And then you don't have that thing anymore. You don't do that thing anymore. And you're like, why the fuck am I on social media? Like if you don't, I was telling her, if someone doesn't have like an actual purpose of using social media as a tool, why are you on it? You know, that was kind of my question here. We we're just having this conversation. And then I, I referenced like Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler who will know social media. There's no fucking way I'm starting a TikTok or an Instagram. If the the movie or the show that they you know want, want them to do says you have to create an account, they're like, then I'm not doing the show. Yeah, I'm jealous of them. I That's, that's the yeah. point I was getting to. Yeah, Yeah, because even back in the MySpace days, it was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Because you're just stressing. You're like, okay, I just uploaded a new track. How many plays am I getting? What's the feedback? 
is this going to help sell units? Are people like saying, oh, you switched the style. We like the old song better. Um, so even back then, it was kind of like, okay, this is just a fucking dead end road. And I envy people, man. People that are like, oh, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a Facebook. And yeah. I'm like, man, I wish I didn't have one either. <laughs> At the same time, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and join yeah. our Patreon. No, I'm, no. Thanks to you guys. And I mean, what I mean is like, if it if it were more productive, totally. Maybe we're just not there yet. Like like for example, these kids that I talked to on Friday. If I just reach a small percentage, and and by the time I, I forget what grade they're in, but. Let's just say by the time they're young adults or in college or whatever, you know, married with a life. And if they can look back and be like, a lot of my friends didn't make it this far. A lot of them are in jail, dead, deadbeat, ain't got shit going on, wasted time. But it was a dude that spoke to my school via Zoom. <laughs> and he had a very persuasive thing. He was like, look, man, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to tell you the real. They're going to call you a sellout. They're going to say you want to be white every time you try to do better and get your life together so y'all let me know if i just uh reach some of y'all yeah i remember talking to a group of kids they're probably about they're probably like nine or ten a friend of mine <clears throat> she's like the administrative dean of, of uh some like i don't know not a daycare but like a private small school anyway this was probably about three or four years ago and uh you could tell who right away in the group it was probably about 30 to 40 kids and the ones that were like, it was about uh, entrepreneurship and, you know, what you're going to do as you start, you know, graduating to like, you know, your middle schools and all that stuff. And uh, the kids that didn't give a fuck were clear. They were like jumping off their chairs, kind of like looking around, or whatever. And the ones that were into it, like business and, you know, generating your own money and what do you want to do with it? Do you want to develop games? Do you want to do whatever, right? They were just like, just like this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like you can kind of tell who's really into it. And that was pretty cool. So there might be one or two out of those 40 people, but yeah, it's nonetheless, it's a, it's an effective conversation to have with little kids. Yeah. That's all you need. Anytime you're speaking to a big group, like say when you're doing stand up, you know, there's a certain percentage. They're just, it, everything's subjective. Yeah. You know, some shit, they're not paying attention or whatever, but there's going to be another percentage we're just like, oh my God, I fucking needed this. Uh, man, I'm laughing. Like like the way I was in Paul Wall's comments yesterday. That's the homie. He's featured on Versace Mariachi. Uh, I'm not knocking him in any way. But it was comical. Yeah. <laughs> because, hey, I'm sure people have had fun at my expense. And uh, <laughs> the people that said, if I see a zombie with a grill, <laughs> I know it's you. <laughs> El homie Paul Weddle, man. That song's great. The album's great. There's no way you're listening to this podcast and haven't heard the album. And if you haven't, Versace Mariachi. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people that are like, what? This dude does music? Um, but um, yeah, man, you know everything's going real smooth in the country right now because everybody's talking about the royal family. That means we must have our shit together. <laughs> That was another tweet slash post everywhere that I would see the comment section was just lit. Like, we fought a revolutionary war so that we didn't have to give a fuck about the British. Why are we talking about this? Well, because Oprah gave Meghan Markle a platform to talk about how she's oppressed and how there's racism. And, um, you know, that's what they're promoting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we literally threw Michelle Obama's book in the trash <laughs> yesterday. Because uh, Marisol had a copy. This is before we were like peeping game. And she's like, oh my God, this is so inspiring. It talks about how where she met Barack and this and this and that. And now we're like, who are we giving this book to? And we, it was just sitting on the table for the longest. Like, who are we going to give it to? Have y'all figured it out? Because I'm holding it. And in my head, in my head, I'm already thinking like, I'm cleaning up right now. This can go in the trash. I'm literally going to throw this book in the trash. So I'm like, hey, so um, have you figured out who you want to donate? Who are we giving this to? She's like, honestly... I was just going to throw it in the trash. I was like, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> say less, fam. Imagine doing a TikTok where you lit it on fire. Well, uh, I mean, somebody did that to my shit. These, <laughs> these, one of these little podcast motherfuckers that are being real quiet yeah. about these kids in these cages. Who built the cages, Joe? These motherfuckers are being real quiet about these kids in these cages, but they did a whole fucking Dia de los Muertos eulogy and shit and, and this... <laughs> You know what I mean? They had a little trash can. Orale, back when you were down. And whew, they got the fire going. Hey, hey, hey. Ready for the bobblehead? <laughs> Orale. Like the old Nickelodeon show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? They start telling sp spooky stories around the campfire. I'm like, you bought it already. Jingle memorabilia. Yeah, exactly, right? Fuck do I care? Thanks for the purchase. Fuck do I care? 
Oh, shit. Uh, while we're transitioning topics here, thanks to everybody that listened to the Chingo Chats episode. So we decided to put that one out to the public. I got a ton of personal DMs on my Instagram of how awesome it was. You guys are awesome talking about this stuff because we started talking about, you know, ironically, I was drinking this and about, you know, cosmic stardust. And the conversation went from early college day radios to like, are we humans, basically, and everything in between. People really dug it. It's exclusively on Patreon. If you're not a patron, you know, sorry for you. Yeah, I feel sorry for your mother. <laughs> I saw one clip you posted. I was like, oh my God, I was rambling. I'm like, the moment in which humans realize they weren't really living is the same moment when robots think they're alive. That should have, I should have inserted the, oh, the clip. People are just like, oh, everywhere. Everybody's brains <clears throat> exploded. Hell yeah. So uh, the German shepherds that Joe Biden had in the White House bit somebody tell me about it i didn't even hear this okay so basically joe biden has some german shepherds at the at the white house uh apparently one of them bit a staffer okay so now the dogs got sent back to delaware back Mm. to the house oh they're his dogs yeah (laughs) yeah 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 joe biden's german shepherds bit somebody it was uh was a staffer black hold on now okay sorry i'm jumping ahead here well you got to remember rob biden is in office they're not going to comment on the ethnicity or race of certain people. If Trump was in office and he had some German, <laughs> German shepherds, shepherds that are German. The headline would read. And they bit a staffer. Don't you think we would have known the motherfucking race of the victim that got bitten within the first two seconds? Yes. Exactly. Because the mainstream media ain't shit. Y'all ain't got no real big homies left. It's just back. It's just down to me and Rob. It's just Rob and I. That's it. That's it. Who else? Who else? They over there having lunch with fucking governors. Mm-hmm. That's what they doing. You over here listening to the motherfucking trill. And you could put that on the pimp. You know what I'm saying? Don't put that on the bun. So did, were there headlines though about it? Because I didn't even about see About the it. dog? Yeah. Well, you know, right now, man, the news, anything that they covering about the White House and Joe Biden is all fluff, foo-foo. Oh, today, um, Dr. Jill Biden made some coffee and uh, Joe Biden says, you know what, honey? Today I want it black. That's the, t- he puts his own log in the fireplace. Joe Biden enjoys a nice, a nice fire going in the Oval Office. He, he prefers chocolate ice cream. The only log he needs is somebody to take a log in his fireplace. Imagine if one of the QAnon or whatever you want to call them, insurrectionists, took, took a dump in his office. <laughs> yeah, leave a little log. <laughs> uh, you, did you know her Instagram is at Dr. Biden? <laughs> I saw yesterday for the first time. I was like, what? I guess. But guess what, man? These little normies, they're they going to eat it up and believe Like Finally, finally, we have decency back in the White House. I had to post this comment on... Um, I love it. It was a comment from my Facebook, and I put it back up on my Facebook. The girl said, OMG, the wokeness in the comments, <laughs> y'all so funny. Anytime I see or hear the words agenda, propaganda, fake news, I laugh my ass off. Between the people hating on Biden, sucking Trump's ass, and the QAnon freaks, I get a shit ton of entertainment. I put, you don't believe there's propaganda or fake news? Listen to my podcast. <laughs> And of course, people took that the wrong way. They're like, oh, Chingo's saying his podcast is fake news. And I'm commenting on my own shit. I'm like, thanks a lot, Latino Hollywood and Univision. We are so screwed. And then now they're calling me a vendido. Here, block. That's how you block people. <laughs> Live on the podcast. Sus. Yeah, man. Fuera. So we're screwed. We're screwed. That, that's, that's, that's the level of comprehension we have within our community. They don't believe there's fake news. They don't believe there's propaganda. They don't believe there's a motherfucking agenda. We're fucked. We're fucked. Good thing to people in uh, South Texas and Roma, Zapata, Stark County, all these places, people in Laredo are concerned. They're like, hey, man, our crime about to go up. Y'all processing these people in McAllen and y'all dumping them off in in, uh, Laredo. So they're like, what the fuck's going on? So quick numbers uh, off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. I think under the Trump administration, and, and again, a sensitive subject, and I understand we're Mexican-Americans. We have a lot of people who come from Mexico, family-wise. We visited there. I spent a lot of time there as a kid. But we're just keeping it to the hard facts of you know policy versus policy. Mm-hmm. Around Trump time, uh, I think it was, it was around 800-ish 
people, you know, would, would come to the United States illegally. And now it's upwards of uh, 6,000 a day. That's a day. And back then, there were clips of uh, CNN, MSNBC saying, what, what, a, what a burden 1,000 a day could be for the, you know, for the United States. Like, they can't imagine how that, because if it got for, from, you know, 800 or over 1,000, it would be such a crisis, right? Mm-hmm. Now we're at 6,000 a day, and it's, mum's the word. It's not, a, it's not a crisis, nothing to worry about. They don't want you to pay attention. They don't want you to know <clears throat> what Rob just broke down. Rob just did more than the motherfucking mainstream media did all week. You ain't heard that anywhere. You've, you not, heard, not, you've you, not heard that anywhere. You have not heard that <clears throat> at a thousand, it was a fucking problem. Now we got a crisis. But guess what? Your president is not doing no press conferences. He ain't answering no questions. Uh, they asked Jen Psaki. They're like, um, when are we going to see the president? answer some questions she's like um you mean more q a's because he's done 40 he's done 40 q a's her smug ass way of replying to things mm. oh, dude. he's Pinch you want more than the fir- more than the 40 like you mean the ones when he's with fucking anderson cooper getting a uh. foot massage <laughs> getting about a ice cream. fucking foot rub uh it, th- yesterday or the day before where they asked her um one it was like oh, we haven't heard the vp talk about the Cuomo thing yet. When can we expect her, you know? She's like, oh, well, I speak for the president, vice president, and, you know, they'd like to know, blah, 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 whatever gibberish. And then he's like, yeah, I understand it's you saying it, but it's another thing if we hear it from the VP who is so vocal about Brett Kavanaugh and all that yeah, other stuff. believe all women. Believe shit. all women. Uh, she's like, well, as I said, I uh, I speak for them, and they would like to blah, blah, blah. Puro pelo. Check this out, man. Listen to this uh, compilation of the media sucking off Cuomo. <laughs> the media, the media, literally. <clears throat> check it out. Cuomo and President Trump's handling of the crisis. Truth versus mendacity. Governor Cuomo, um, out there day after day after day. Everything Trump isn't honest, direct, brave. Real leadership from the time the president of the United States should have provided. Governor Cuomo is clearly living in a totally different reality. The actual one than the president of the United States. Governor Cuomo has become a national leader. For a lot of people, Andrew Cuomo has become the leader of the Democratic Party. He is conveying incredible strength. You spoke to National Guard troops today in a stirring speech that, if I wasn't listening carefully, I thought you were sending soldiers off to war. This has been a remarkable show of leadership by Governor Cuomo in recent days. He's providing hope. But not false hope. Governor Cuomo, I think, is, is, is one of the heroes on, on the front lines. With all of this adulation that you're getting for doing your job, are you thinking about running for president? Andrew Cuomo, who has a daily television show. Asked Cuomo and... Hey, man, nos están viendo la cara de pendejos. We're, we're literally... The American public, they're looking at us like suckers. They're looking at us like suckers. Because the mainstream media, if you, as you heard in that compilation... Um, Governor Cuomo's doing such a great job. It's he's heroic. He's like a hero on the front lines. He's giving us what Trump is not. He's doing such a good job. Trump is not, and y'all bought it. We should make a shirt. Actually, first of all, it should be uh, pendejo X. You know, los mirando la cara de pendejo X. But we should make a shirt that says no me miras la cara de pendejo. So yeah, some something clown in the pendehex, the pendehex, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Don't be a pen the hicks. Yeah, I I urge people to kind of look up some of these compilations. Like, look at the contrast between just regular day to day news and then the hoaxes and then this other stuff. Like, if you have friends that like you just kind of want to try to share the information to, just like deliver them like what they already kind of know and believe, and then just try to find something that contrasts that and just see if you can have a conversation about it. If you don't care, then that's fine. But if you want to have you know these conversations with friends, it's really tough to do. I don't really advise it, it's honestly. It's very difficult because you're going to get that cognitive dissonance. Their their belief is not going to be able to reconcile reconcile what you're showing them. Like the facts and stuff and the hypocrisy, whatever it is you're trying to show them, their prior belief is not going to fucking match up. If they already think Trump said drink bleach and you're showing them the transcript, you're showing them the video, you're like, show me where he said drink bleach. Show me where he said bleach. And it's like, it says right there, UV light. You know, it says inject, it, in, it says with the help of doctors, uh, it di- the UV, it'll disinfect, it goes in there. Okay, show me where it said drink, show me where it said bleach. And uh, uh, he's racist. Pinche pendejos. 
pinche pendejex. Pendejex. But hey, keep voting how y'all voting. Keep living over there by Tent City. You know, keep slashing, killing jobs. Keep making us America last. Keep sucking up to China. Meanwhile, today, when this drops, everybody, Texas is fully open. Fully. So prepare for uh, puras pendejadas on social media as people start walking into businesses, uh, which, you know, if it's a small business, this is the way that I see it. If it's a small business and they still kind of ask you to wear your mask or whatever, I would do it to a small business owner who's trying to get everything back off the ground and, and whatever, whatever. But when it's Costco and Kroger and shit, you can suck a fat one. That's just my opinion. Yeah, well, H-E-B is not requiring... They're not. Shout out H-E-B. They ask you, like, hey, please, but also not a mandate. Costco, on the other hand, can't come in without a mask. Okay, not going to Costco. Target, Target, might not go to Target either. Well, um, when we were at Lucky's wedding, it felt like 2019. Like, wasn't nobody tripping. We're outdoors. Like, the ceremony was outside. There's wind blowing. People aren't all up on each other. The sun's out. Uh, beautiful ceremony. Everybody shaking hands, you know, because don't nobody got a fever. Yeah. Ain't nobody up there sneezing, coughing with symptoms. Obviously, there's this theory that, you know, you could be asymptomatic. But shit. I saw the video you sent me about uh, children. The, the kid pass thing, the school pass, the digital pass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that for real? Yeah. I think we talked Microsoft. about it. Yeah. yeah. I, I stumbled across it again. I think Informed with Anthony had posted it. So I sent it to you uh -huh. so you can see what I was trying to describe. Okay, that's it's from like, the Mommy, episode. I'm scared. It's, yeah. like, it's okay, Mika. You're going to have this little QR code vaccine pass. So I was hearing something about when you try to go buy a ticket for an event, yeah. like Ticketmaster or something, they, wanna, they want you got to show your vaccine shit. And then, so now they have your info and something else. So basically, like, they're all going to start keeping track of who's falling in line with the program. <laughs> Guess what? You ain't finna see me talking about what to do. <laughs> I just got my fucking shot. <laughs> Call me crazy. Nah, you're not old. You're not. I mean, wh what reason do I have? Why would I jump in front of the line in front of people that might have like autoimmune situation going on? Funny you use the term jump in line because that's what the CEO of Pfizer said because he hadn't taken it yet. And they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to cut in the line. It's like, what? Hey, hey, man, that's a good excuse. That's a great excuse. That's why I just hit y'all with that politically correct answer. Like, like hey, it. man, what, what I look like jumping like the line? <laughs> because think about it. I'm going to wait to the last possible moment when they're like, hey, look, Chingo, do you still want to be driving to all your shows? Don't you want to be able to check into Airbnb or a hotel? Don't you want to have your fucking vaccine card so you can go in the HEB, so you can be a part of society and you can bank and have commerce and, and you know what I'm saying? Like Take a vacation. I'm going to wait to the last because the longer you wait, the more info you have. Yeah. So if one of them is iffy, I'm going to give y'all time to see which ones are the iffy ones. <laughs> Hey, call me crazy. Call me to sell out. Call me to sell out. But I'm not over there kicking it with governors talking about I just got my shot. You know, speaking of governors, I got to bring it back to Cuomo again. I can't believe that we're just going to overlook how he's a grandma killer and just talk about these allegations. Yeah, that's why they I think that's part of why they're doing it. I think just like trying to I'm speculating that they somehow some way want to. It's like we just saw the media propping him up. He's winning awards. Hollywood is on his fucking nuts. Everyone, the left, Alyssa Milano, oh my God, Governor Cuomo, he's doing such a fucking good job. And then boom, Me Too. What happened to the hashtag Me Too movement every time a Democrat gets accused? Yeah. Where y'all at? Where's the hashtag Me Too? What had happened, cuh? What, f five now. A fifth one has come out. And he still said, I will not resign. What happened to the hashtag Me Too? Where y'all at? Y'all crickets. Cricket. Y'all fucking crickets. Crickets. Because y'all ain't got no real big homies no more in y'all's hood, bro. It's just, back, it's just down to me and Rob. That's it's just it. Rob and I. Somebody got to keep it 100. Only on Red Pill Tamales. You know, he's going to bring 50%. I'm going to bring 50%. We keeping it 100, though. There you go. So, yeah, man, us Neanderthals down here ain't got to wear no mask and no more. And people, man, the comments, people be like, Y'all can't even keep y'all's power grid on. And where's Ted Cruz? Hey, man, shut the fuck up. We not worried about where the fuck Ted Cruz want to take a vacation at. He's a senator. It's not like he's the governor. It's not like he's the head of ERCOT. It's not like he works for HLMP NRG Reliant. 
It's not like he's a mayor. He's a fucking senator. He he could zoom in if we need his opinion. Yeah, which is all he can give us. Um, and, but you know, AOC took advantage. She started promoting her Green New Deal. She brought her little money. All the normies in Houston. Oh my God, I got a bottle of water from AOC. All the fucking normies was excited. <laughs> that sounds so dumb. The normies were excited. Oh my God, AOC. She used to be a waitress. Oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Governor Cuomo can do no wrong. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what if we found out AOC was a dude? She just has a big raging cock under her dress. A la verga. <laughs> her name, she used to be Trey O.C. <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. What else is in the news, Chingo? Okay, we spoke about Cuomo. We spoke about George Floyd, uh, the Royals, the German Shepherd, um, Zapata, Roma, Stark County. Uh, with that one, they were basically saying, like, they all voted Trump. I mean, for overwhelmingly. And everyone's noticing how effective and persuasive Trump was because he had such a large, uh, like, black approval, minority approval, like, votes. He was getting new voters. 50%, over 50% of Latinos voted for Trump's, that were pro-Trump policies. Over 50%? Yeah. Like, it literally was like 51%. So it's basically Venezuelans, Cubans, and as they like to call us, whitewashed Texas coconuts. Yes. Basically. Because, uh... Califas, they're not trying to hear it. Our brothers and sisters in California, they're not ready yet. They, they, they're not seeing it. They're not seeing that the reason you got homeless encampments all around your neighborhood, the reason crime is going up, why? Because the party you elected and these politicians really don't match your values. You know what's going to be... I'm sorry, not to... You have good values. You just need to vote for the people that are going to act accordingly. It's it's funny, too, how, like, the comments are, like, by Texas. Like, it was good knowing you. Yeah, like, R.I.P. Jesus Christ. It, like, you're a fucking idiot. Do you not know what the recovery rate is? And and now they're seeing that obesity plays a big role. Yeah. They're saying it's a fat-demic. But we're so PC. We're so politically correct. Cosmopolitan got obese women on the cover now. Yeah. So now that's that's considered healthy. And we're not allowed to say... Hey man, um, the reason it's hitting minorities is because we got more obese people. Are the mats? So the CDC had put out a new mask report. Are, were they on the other page or maybe on that page? Or I think they're right there. Oh yeah, the numbers. <clears throat> uh-huh. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. Can you read some of those off? Here we go. Matt, quote. This is coming from where, bro? CDC. Okay. The CDC says, quote, mask mandates were associated with a 0.5 percentage point decrease in daily COVID nineteen case growth rates one to twenty days after implementation. And decreases of 1.8 percentage points after 81 to 100 days. So it's basically saying that the mask mandates didn't really help that much, right? That's, that's just basically. their words. That's, that's their numbers. And then further, it says, quote from the CDC, mask mandates were associated with a 0.7 percentage point decrease in daily COVID-19 death grow rates one to 20 days after implementation and a 1.9 percentage point after 81 to 100 days so we're talking about one percent now you contrast it with um for example 9.5 million jobs lost source economic policy institute four million small businesses permanently closed by the end of the year source inc magazine inc and a 93 percent increase in mental health issues source mental health america so basically, it's called the okie doke. It's called 9.5 million jobs lost. But hey, you got the virtue signal and snitch on your neighbor because of the mask. Four million small businesses permanently closed. But hey, the rich got richer and Costco's open, Walmart's open, and Amazon just made another 72 gazillion. <laughs> and 93% increase in mental health issues. So now we're all stressed out, depressed, fucking up our mindset. But hey, at least you get to think think that you did something. You know, and that's just straight from the CDC's mouth and, and the sources. And, you know, that, that's kind of one of the things that bums me out the most is what, <clears throat> what this mental, what the effect of all this on people's mentality and their, their mental health is going to do for the next, I'm going to guess, three, two to three years. Oh, at least. At least, minimum. Imagine, dude, somebody who lost a business over this, you think 10 years from now they're just going to forget Oh, no. You think 10 years from now, you're going to just forget that 2020 fucked you in the ass. 
And you know, Americans are resilient. People that built these businesses are resilient. But at the same time, with the amount of mental health issues happening because of all this, and I know people are like, oh, you can build another business. That's that's dumb. I don't, I don't like hearing those conversations. That's stupid. If you spent 40 years, let's say you immigrated here, or maybe you're from here, and you built a business, spent 30, 40 years building it up, and then it's gone forever, I'd be surprised to see that person live another 10 years. That They're going to be a part of that statistic of the people with mental health issues. Well, you think they're going to keep track of... For example, people that die sooner because of the stress that was put on them. How many people maybe got heart disease? I mean, just gave up on life. Um, Just silent killers. Blood pressure got out of whack. Um, Do they count the suicides as, as a result of the lockdown so that we can see net difference? Like, oh, these stringent lockdowns, us trying to be like these other countries, actually made it to where it was worse we end up losing more people to bullshit and how many more people are gonna like it's hard to recover economically from a lot of this stuff Mm -hmm. you know like like rob said you can't just be like oh figure out another career oh just pivot the same way they try to tell the keystone workers the pipeline workers (laughs) maybe just get a green energy job and it's like okay is there a factory already that makes these fucking um wind mills or whatever wind mills. wind wind is there a factory in my town in motherfucking um wherever those people the midland Keys- where were the keystone pipeline? uh i think it was midland was it or i don't i thought it ran up there but oh like, it was by, yeah it ran up from canada fucking all so the way it's here a, oh all the way yeah oh my god so you're literally telling these folks like just go get one of these solar panel jobs okay where how sway yeah that was one of the <laughs> that was one of the uh like questions that early on when that happened, people were asking uh, Chucky, and Chucky was like, "Well, you know, they're coming." And the Chucky reporter, Schumer, yeah, they're like, uh, "No, fucking." What are you talking about, Chucky? Gen- oh, Jen Psaki. Yeah, and she's like, "Well, they're coming." It's like, "Well, what do you tell people that need a job now that these jobs are five to ten years out?" You know, maybe. And he's just like, "Well, you know, uh, we should be patient and this, that, and the other." Like, meanwhile, puro pedo, meanwhile they got that other pipeline cracking over there in Syria and Qatar, mm-hmm. Qatar, 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 however yeah. you want to say it. So you, you fuck off one pipeline, and so now who's benefiting? Russia? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're over there blowing shit up. Now we got to send troops over there to protect this pipeline, I guess, for the workers and shit. Y'all fell for the okie doke, man. This is what y'all wanted. This, y'all, y'all, y'all deserve every little bit, every inch of that riata. Yeah, anytime your friends complain, tell them that. Anytime you hear a friend of yours that you know voted for Biden or didn't vote for Trump, just say, hey, that's what you guys voted for. That's what you wanted. That's what hey, you got. I'm going to make a shirt that says, don't blame me, bitch. I voted for Trump. Ho. <laughs> uh, what are we rounding out the hour with? Have you seen the um, uh, bath, bath and no. Body Works video? No. You no. haven't? No. Oh, sweet. Enlighten me. Let me see if I can cue it up real quick. Because, you know, people are losing their goddamn minds over uh, over masks and i believe this took place in arizona i don't even know how arizona is right now with their their masks and all that jazz i mean everything's so polarizing even the vaccine has been politicized everything has been politicized here we go here we go i'm gonna pull it up for the people as well bath and body works so that they can see it hey, we about to watch some mental health go down right here yeah right let's see a little bit of civil war Mira, putazos a la verga. Damn. This bitch knows jujitsu. The entire staff of Bath and Body jumped on this woman over a mask? Yeah, over not wearing a mask. You're gonna kill me, bitch, so I gotta kill you first. I'm asymptomatic. Oh. See, ladies, this why you, this why, ladies, this why you gotta stay in shape and learn some self defense. Run it back. Run it back, Turbo. This is why you got to learn some self-defense, because I'm seeing real sloppy fighting going down. And this was all because... Uh, so this is what was caught on video, right? It was because a lady was standing too close to another lady, and they kind of started arguing and stuff in line, and, and the lady wouldn't leave, and she wasn't... I think she wasn't wear, wearing a mask and standing too close, or a combination of the two. And then the employees got involved, and literally you saw her strike the lady first. That lady's about to get paid. Papa mm. paid from Bath and Body Works or whatever the fuck it was. Mm. Uh, it's ridiculous. And I saw another video where the, the commentary was just like, this white lady standing too close to another lady. 
and felt privileged to not stand or social distance or whatever. And it's like, God damn it, that narrative yeah, never stops. They'll find a way to twist it into white. Yeah. I feel bad for white people, y'all. I feel so bad for white people, especially the white man. Especially if you're a straight white man, you at the bottom of the totem pole, my brother. I'm going to pray for straight white men at night because they're, they're, y'all are second-class citizens. Even though the mainstream narrative is that y'all control everything and it's the white man holding everybody down, the white man can't even say nothing. No. They, they fucking breathe. <gasps> Did you hear how he breathed? He think he better than us. That's privilege. All right. I got another one for you. Have you seen? Actually, it was on the Lexit page um, of the, the, the BLM protest at the kids cheerleading competition. Let's pull it up. Oh, shit, man. It's going to be right. I'm about to watch some uh, reverse racism. Where's the volume? <laughs> Here come the little white girls. What's this, New York? Looks like it, right? They're little girls. Brianna. But there's white people all up in the blm crowds it's like mostly white people did you see that i did and then the little the last little girl that went into the cheer competition was black i was like oh that's gotta be tough i couldn't pull it up for the listeners sorry guys i didn't have that that feature didn't pop up today but i just wanted you to hear it at least you heard it chingo saw it that shit made me so mad yesterday yeah it was basically a small group of people protesting talking about brianna taylor and black lives matter holding up signs um I guess the the young lady with the megaphone. Yeah, she. I think she was black. She was the one talking all that shit, uh, and they were kind of harassing a little group of uh, cheerleaders that walked by, and that's basically it. That's basically it. Yeah, you got an idiot with a fucking megaphone <sighs> talking all that shit. Meanwhile, you got these innocent little white girls going to do a fucking cheer competition, and they and they talking about. Brianna Taylor is dead because like what? What? <laughs> like I'm nine. I want a scholarship when I get older. It's a it's a sad state, you know, sad state of the world right now. Basically, man, people people's emotions and heartstrings allow them to be used as pawns. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, not everybody knows both arguments behind the Brianna Taylor situation. Right? right one one group of folks says supposedly man she was helping homeboy sell dope that she was somehow involved with her boyfriend selling the dope uh her address was listed on the warrant because of said dope like they had phone calls recordings from jail this that and the third um you know it, it's it's weird right because that no knock warrant that already is like hold on you want to give the government the right to just just uh, supposedly they have to announce themselves, but they, they don't got a knock or something. It's a fucked up situation. But my point is, I was always very careful of the Vanessa Guillen situation because I saw it as a tragedy. Mm-hmm. I saw it as it's unfortunate that women have to deal with sexual harassment in the barracks, on base, in the armed forces. That's an issue. I saw how her family was trying to get the word out, trying to march trying to get some change but i also saw how social media was playing a role and how it was during the height of the blm and people were trying to turn it into latino it's a latino lives thing and you know i was just peeping game i wasn't trying to be like yes it's the white man's fault and it's because she was latina and that's why we all need to go downtown and then let antifa blend in with us and fuck shit up Mm -hmm. that's what i was worried about yeah it was a couple of weeks ago, at this point, probably like a month or so ago, where there was the uh, other, I think she was an army uh, person who had a case that ended up being false. Am, yeah. I, am I not mistaken? That, right, right? And mm-hmm. it, it didn't mean that he had, or somebody had, like, leech her OnlyFans, I think it was, and she made it seem like she had been, you know, uh, I guess taken advantage of by some other dude. It's just like, this, and a lot of big names spread that story, and it was not true. Well, here's what happens. Here you go. It's, man, you hit, you hit the fucking nail on the head. 
sometimes what happens is people jump the gun because there's something on social media that seems because when you just see something out of context, I saw the same clip. I saw the young lady in her military, like army outfit, crying, upset, talking about, and I walk in and I see my accuser yeah, that right one. there mm -hmm. and this and this and that. And oh my God, and why is this happening in the military? And blah, 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 crying and shit. And I saw it and we were at the gym and I was like, oh shit. I was like, babe, you got to see this. It's like another, uh, it's like the Vanessa Gian thing, man. They're harassing these girls. And then we got back to working out. By the time we were done, I went back to check and I think John Burke posted. He's like, now look, now here's some more context. Apparently she had only fans. Somehow the shit got out and that's really what she was mad about. And when the other clip circulated, it was taken out of context and people just kind of filled in the blanks and yeah. assumed because that's how the human brain works. That's just how the brain works, man. We're, we don't, we're not perfect. Yeah. It's uh it's unfortunate because it, diminishes when shit like that is real and does happen but it doesn't help the narrative <laughs> to touch on that you're just like oh was wrong oops let's sweep it under the rug let's move on to the next case that's why you got to be careful of what the fuck you repost and and be careful what you believe in the first fucking 48 hours yeah like watch how these stories develop yeah and do you do i mean if you're into it if you're interested if the story resonates with you if you feel like you have an attachment to it for whatever reason do the research immediately and see if you can beat the news to break in whatever other information comes out because like uh, there was a, a clip, I just had it sent to me again yesterday. It was like a Bill Gates, you know, briefs the CIA on. Did you do you remember that one? No. Mm -mm. So I didn't pull it up because I thought you'd seen it. It was, it was when we first started RPT. I was getting this a lot on my personal Instagram. It was a, a clip supposedly of Bill Gates briefing the CIA <clears throat> on something that they were working on that would basically like. If you injected it, this person with it, they would stop being like fundamental Christian types and would, it, would, it would cure yeah, religion. Yeah, yeah. The, the religion gene. Yeah. Do you remember that? I think I saw that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Immediately, because I, I got it a lot and I just looked into it and it was from a Kickstarter documentary from like 10 years ago that I don't think ever got made. And that was a part of the trailer for the Kickstarter. It's not really Bill Gates. It wasn't really a CIA briefing and it wasn't a real thing, but people just ran with it and started spreading it. And I was like, okay, if I found this in 10 minutes... Why, why are so many people thinking that this is true? And this was you know, supposed to help, I guess, our uh, arguments with, with things that were coming out at the time, but that's just a, a point of what I'm saying. So it wasn't a real uh, presentation that the guy was giving? No, no. It was, just, it was a part of a documentary. So it was a fake it was, it was presentation. A fake, yeah. The, the documentary was supposed to be called uh, Fun, Fun Vax or Van Vax, something like that. Mm. It was from a Kickstarter, an old-ass Kickstarter. So, but, and I, I say that to say this. It's really hard to get tricked by some of this shit sometimes mm -hmm. because there's already a lot of fire around subjects. There's already a lot of buzz, a lot of controversy. And then you see something like that and you're like, send, send, share, share, you know, text link. And it's like, well, wait, wait, where do they come from? Like, what's the source? And that's why I'm very careful. I try to do my best as, as far as what I post. So, for example, if, if you see a compilation of Joe Biden's gaffes <clears throat> or something or him saying weird shit, obviously... Some of it might be taken out of context. Maybe some of it he didn't mean it that way or whatever. So, yeah, but it's still funny. It's still funny. Yeah, and the motherfucker's is. still old. And he still ain't giving a press conference. And he still killed jobs. And he ran on a lot of fucking fake-ass promises. Because the media had his back. And they were busy making Trump look like the bad guy. When Trump was just saying, America first, drain the swamp, bring back jobs. It's all about the economy. Get these kids back in school. We don't need a fucking lockdown and shutdown. You know, it's going to be a... We're going to bounce back, folks. It's going to bounce back. Here, let's round out the episode with this. Did you see uh, any, of the, any of the clips or info on how they want them? House Democrats want people in prison to be able to vote? <sighs> Explain that shit to me. Darling. So Prager, again, did a, did a very, very great little clip, little video where they were in Denton up there no, near Dallas at a festival. It was like an arts and jazz festival. And they were walking around. You know, Will Witt was asking people like, hey, do you think that, you know, prisoners should be able to vote? And it was overwhelming. It was like 95% of people. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, just because they, you know, they, they did a crime. You mean vote when they get out or vote while they're in? No, vote while they're in. And people knew that was the question? And they were still down with it? Yeah. Imagine it both ways, though. Honestly, like, if you're a felon, like, if, you, if you're released as a felon, which... Let me let me take that back. It, it the question may have been phrased one way or another. I don't remember. I just okay, saw it the other okay. day. But either way, I mean, whether you're in or out, to be able to vote, 
and then they even said like what if they you know murdered somebody or raped somebody it's like well you know just they, they served their time or they're serving their time doesn't mean they can't you know vote like they should have a, a say so in the hey, process until they all start voting republican and then they're going to be like oh we can't have this yeah dude it was, and then he was just like what's happening to dallas what's happening to dallas texas that everybody here thinks that it's okay well it's probably a, a blue run city uh folks haven't been educated to peep game you have celebrities musicians comedians and hollywood fucking late night tv hosts all promoting this equity equality feel good unity uh fuck the trump tards and biden biden's gonna save us you you i mean once you see it ladies and gentlemen you're gonna realize what kind of a shit show we living in where this state tv is basically what it is all this curated crap that they putting out there. Once you start to peep game, like, why are they covering? Like, has Jimmy Kimmel and uh, Oliver and Colbert and all, Trevor Noah, have they called out Jen Psaki or Cuomo? Are they talking about, up oh, still no stimmy? Or, up oh, we're bombing Syria now. No, they're too busy saying, Dr. Seuss really isn't canceled, guys. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking bullshit late night. You better off going on YouTube and looking at some other shit. Look up some Andrew Schultz, some Tim Dillon. Uh, what's this? Uh, no Agenda podcast. Red Pill Tamales. You know what I mean? He just had Alex Jones on. Did yeah, I want to go watch it. Yeah. I want to listen to the, it. The clip was fire. Okay, last thing, actually, and then we can wrap this one mm -hmm. up. The Blue Anon thing. Mm, money. Money. Money disappears <sighs> from urban or what uh, was it urban dictionary and i think google hit it and just vanished from the internet y'all some hoes man and then it came back up so i was just reading an article from newsweek that just posted it before you walked in where uh i don't forgot who uh Pasobic, Pasobic, the guy yeah, on twitter uh, jack jack Pasobic. yeah yeah he uh he caught it early and saw that you know that it was gone and now it's back up but that's hilarious yeah y'all keep keep fucking with google y'all keep fucking with google Keep Googling shit. And they, they only letting you see what they want you to see. Damn. Crazy. They but, just but, 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 scrubbed but, it from the internet. But, 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 but Google has the answers. You ask a question and it gives you the answer. No, it don't. That's not how it works. It's yeah, a company. It's the answer they want to give you. It's a company and they'll, they'll put it, they'll list it in the order that they want. And if you, if you dig maybe on page 10 at the bottom, maybe you'll find an alternative perspective. But they're, they run by, they're run they're they are controlled by the left big tech all that shit so i might post so like i posted this little girl from tiktok that was saying like uh i forget who it was they're doing a 22 million dollar think tank to figure out why so many latinos voted conservative like oh it's a national threat when latinos start to think for themselves and turn off univision and start to peep game she's like 22 million and of course instead of people getting the message what did they say Oh, Chingo gets his news from TikTok, from little <laughs> girls on TikTok. And I'm like, God damn, y'all's fucking slow. Y'all are dense. Uh, There's no helping y'all. There's no saving y'all, man. Like, you missed the entire fucking point. And then someone's like, well, this is dumb, Chingo, because both sides have think tanks to figure out. I was like, yeah, but only one side has taken our fucking vote for granted. And y'all just give it to them every fucking year. And that's why you're over there living by Tent City. And your favorite comedian is kicking it with the governor. Send, send us out of here, man. Send us out of here. All right, y'all. It's your boy Chingo Blingo. I will see you in a city near you. Shout out to all the patrons because we still have our freedom of speech. It's going to be harder to deep platform us. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. Always trying to warn y'all about the okie dokes. We're just trying to present y'all more information than what the mainstream is giving y'all. So peep game, wake up, pop your red pill tamal, and hit us up. Red pill tamales on Patreon. So it's patreon.com. Red Pill Tamales. Yo. And I'll see you in a city near you. Sass.